I don't always drink moonshine, but when I do, I prefer West Coast Exterminator. Stay thirsty, my friends. So here's a subject that I've been thinking of for a little while and that's the use of sugar in everybody's washes or moonshine. And though I started using processed white sugar, I don't think I'm going to use it anymore because uh, the differences between sugar shine, I mean white sugar shine, which a lot of people are, are doing, and rum, the taste between the two is there's no comparison. I mean you could tell good rum from a sugar shine. You should be able to. And the sugar shine it just isn't that good. So I'm thinking that if I have this poor quality substance in my in my wash then I'm probably getting a poor quality moonshine. And I'm gonna try to step up things a little bit. So we're going to talk about different types of sugars that I'm going to start using from now on. And the white sugar is out. So what do we got left? Well, as I told you with uh, the rum, we were using molasses and we were using brown sugar. Now, as in the, the video you saw with the uh, people in Pakistan, uh, they mixed their mango wash with brown sugar and they like the results a lot. So brown sugar is going to be something that I'm going to be using a lot. Uh, molasses is going to be something I'm going to be using a lot. Here's uh, two more things that I found on the shelf at the local Walmart. Uh, this is I found at Walmart, but I also found another a, a bulk bag of it at the local Amish store. And what this is, this is raw sugar. This is what this is before they process it. And it's got a much better taste to it. Now, if you ever seen the the movie I Robot with Will Smith, and he's getting a cup of coffee, and you see him putting sugar in, and the sugar doesn't look right, this is what he's using. The granules on it are quite large, much larger than the white sugar, and it has a brown texture to it because it it's very unrefined. It is uh, basically raw sugar. Now this, this looks intriguing. I, f I found this on the shelf at Walmart and I said, well, we got to try this. I don't know if it would be any good, but we got to try it. This is organic coconut palm sugar. An unrefined sugar alternative. It's unrefined, so it's brown. And how does this taste? That has an excellent characteristic to it. It doesn't necessarily taste like coconut. Maybe there's just the tiniest hint of a coconut background in it. But it doesn't taste anything like coconut. And if I was making my uh, banana brandy moonshine all over again, what I would do is I would either use molasses or I would use this in there because I think this would taste good in the banana brandy. Also the idea of bananas and rum that sounds good too so I would also use molasses. So that's one example of stepping up the game here that I'm planning on doing in the future and now we're going to make sure I already know that this will work and I've bought a bag of the 
bulk sugar before and I've used it in my coffee and it is pretty good this I have no idea so what we're going to do we're going to take these two we're going to see if they ferment because if they don't ferment there's no point in using them except maybe as a flavor additive so what we're going to do we're going to take a little of each And we're going to activate some yeast with it. And if the yeast gets activated, then we know that this stuff will work. Now there's one thing, or there's one more thing that uh, that you can use that I haven't shown you and that's a syrup called blue agave and the reason why you don't see it here is because well it is expensive you could buy a bottle of it probably smaller than this slightly smaller than this and it's about ten dollars this was about four this is about three and four dollars so it wasn't that big of a deal this was a couple of bucks. So, but the blue agave is what they use for tequila. And you haven't seen me try to make a tequila because I'm not sure I can perfect it yet or come close to it. So you haven't seen me use uh, blue agave. I mean, for one, it's expensive. Two, it's for tequila. And I'm not sure about tequila. So, but obviously, blue agave does work because they make tequila out of it. Okay, so we're going to take the normal Red Star yeast that I've used hundreds of times. It's been in the freezer all this time. Still good. he would use a whisk for scrambling eggs. Okay, so now we're going to let these sit and we'll get back to them. Now while we're waiting for that yeast to work, we're going to talk about another subject and that is what to put your moonshine in. Now originally you've seen me using old half gallon Gatorade bottles and I still don't see a problem with it but like I said I'm stepping up the game here so I bought this bottle you've seen me use this bottle uh, for the cognac recipe because I thought it was a special recipe I thought it needed something special to present it in so this was purchased on eBay uh, it was about $20 they also have some uh, lovely skull, crystal skull uh, decanters that you could put your moonshine in, and those would look, nice. and they, you know, they would kind of uh, hit, drive the message home. Hey, <laughs> look out! But I've seen something at uh, my local discount store, and what I don't know if everybody has this. Certainly, people in other countries probably wouldn't have this, but. Uh, the store that I've purchased these at was called Aldi's. Now, a lot of people might have an Aldi's, but you might not. But just keep a lookout. And that's what I do. I keep a lookout for things. And 
even if I don't necessarily think I'm going to use the product inside, I might use the container that's on the outside. And that's what we have here. So this, this is a sparkling lemonade. And it is pretty good. Now the thing about this is that the top, look at it, the, the container is made of glass, but look at the top. This is a reusable top. Look at this. You pour some lemonade and you reseal the bottle. And the thing stays closed. This is beautiful. And the product's pretty good too. A sparkling lemonade. I never had it before now, but it is pretty good. So here's another one. Same type of top. We have a brown bottle this time. And this was Sparkling Spice Pumpkin Cider. Now I didn't really care too much for it. You know, I except for pumpkin pie, maybe pumpkin cookies, or occasional pumpkin cake. I'm not a big pumpkin fan. Unless it's like Thanksgiving and then you know you got a pumpkin pie. I'm all over it, sure. And other people would probably like this a lot and I would drink it. It just doesn't really tickle my fancy, but the bottle is awesome. Here's another one that I've just recently purchased. This is just a cocktail mix. A pomegranate martini. And I just love the uniqueness of the bottle. It has a twist-off cap. And I have no idea what I'm going to use this for because I'm not going to make uh, pomegranate martinis. Maybe I'll use it for something else. Maybe I'll make some type of punch with it. I don't know. But one of these days I'm going to have some finished product in here. And when you get your bottle empty, you know, all you got to do is soak these in a little hot, soapy hot water and scrub it off. Take a knife and scrape it all off and there's your nice clean bottle look at that that's a thing of beauty you open it up you pour yourself a shot and you can close it right back up I've purchased several of these And then you can get on your printer and you can make yourself some custom labels for your product. So that's what I'm going to be putting my stuff in from now on. Now as far as the aging process goes, yes, I'm still going to have to use uh, something large. Probably uh, large pickle jars. Big wide mouth. Let you put a few wood chips in there and then you can drain it off and then when you got your final finished product you can put it inside one of your fancy bottles here's something I've also done just since I have it handy uh, this is the honey mango wine that I tried me and my wife tried and then I decided to make uh, uh, the honey mango brandy with this so since it's a glass container and since it had a cork I decided why not put the honey mango brandy in the honey mango wine bottle. Seems perfectly logical to me. So now let's have a look at our new types of sugar. Here they are. As you can see they're doing very well. This one appears to be doing slightly better and this is the coconut sugar and it says that it has vitamins and minerals I'm not really seeing anything on the back right away but it does say on the front that it has uh, vitamins and minerals it seems possible that it does and 
so now what I'm thinking was now that we see that this is working better than this and I don't think this has anything extra to it it's just raw sugar but there are things called yeast nutrients and people that have asked me hey uh, West Coast my uh, wash my mash isn't working that good what do you suggest and I said well a guy once told me that uh, he makes sugar shine and he uses wheat germ and when he does that it blows that little bubbler right off the top of the container so this must count as a yeast nutrient and I'm thinking that's what we have here we have a couple of items in here a couple of vitamins a couple of minerals that act as a yeast nutrient which would explain why this is ahead of this so now that we uh, have our new types of sugars I can't wait to start doing some new videos with some new recipes and what you need to also consider is going back to my old recipes getting the sugar out of there getting out the white processed sugar and trying something else.